Welcome to the Curtain Call Radio Show, a new show from Curtain Call Theatre. We will be posting a radio show every month for all of you. Our first show will be The Angel Intrudes by Floyd Dell. The characters are The Policeman, played by Chad Briggy, The Angel, played by Kyle Yetzer, Jimmy Pendleton, played by Andy Velishek, Annabelle, played by Laura Velishek, and The Narrator, played by Bill Wenzel Sr., directed and edited by Bill Wenzel. Sit back, relax, and enjoy The Angel Intrudes. Washington Square by Moonlight A stream of Greenwich villagers hurrying across to the Brevoort before the doors are locked. In their wake, a sleepy policeman. The policeman stops suddenly on seeing an angel with shining garments and great white wings who has just appeared out of nowhere. Hey, you. Sir, are you addressing me? Yes, and I have a good mind to lock you up. How very inhospitable. Is that the way you treat strangers? Don't you know it's again the law of New York to parade the streets in a masquerade costume? No, I didn't know. You see, I've just arrived this minute from heaven. <laughs> Ye look it. See here, me lad. You've been drinking too many of them stingers. You'd better take a taxi and go home. What? So soon? I know how ye feel. I've been that way myself. But I can't leave you go traipsing about in skirts. Sir, I'm not traipsing about. I'm attending an important business, and I must ask you not to detain me. Not so fast, me laddie buck. What business have you at this hour of the night? Tell me that. I don't mind telling you. It concerns a mortal called James Pendleton. Ah, so you're a friend of Jimmy Pendleton's, are you? Not exactly. I'm his guardian angel. Ha! Well, Faith, he needs one. Come, me by. I'll see you safe to his door. Thank you, but if you don't mind, I prefer to go alone. Ah, good night to you, then. He idly watches the angelic figure walk away and stares with amazement as it spreads its wings and soars to the top of Washington Arch, wafting its way over the neighboring housetops to the northeast. Jimmy Pendleton is dozing in an easy chair in his studio in Washington Mews. A yellow-backed French novel has fallen from his knee to the floor. A suitcase stands beside the chair. Jimmy is evidently about to go on some journey. A clock begins to strike somewhere. Jimmy Pendleton awakes. Ah, oh, what a weird dream. Twelve o'clock! Oh, the taxi ought to be here. He takes two tickets from his pocket, looks at them, and puts them back. Then he commences to pace nervously up and down the room, muttering to himself. Fool! Imbecile! Idiot! He is not, so that you can notice it, any of these things. He is a very handsome man of forty. There is a blast of an auto horn outside. Too late. That's the taxi. Yes, yes. He makes a movement toward the door when it suddenly opens and a lovely lady enters. He stares at her in surprise. Annabelle? Yes, it's me. I got tired of waiting and the door was unlocked, so I came right in. Aren't you glad to see me? I'm delighted, but... but... I thought we were to meet at the station. So we were. You haven't changed your mind. No. Uh, good. But... Y yes I got to wondering. Wondering about what? About love. Well, it's a subject that can stand a good deal of wondering about. I've wondered about it myself. That's just it. You speak so cynically about it. I don't believe you're in love with me at all. Nonsense. Of course I'm in love with you. No, you're not. But I tell you I am. No, 
Foolish child. Let's not quarrel about it. What do you suppose this insanity is if it's not love? What do you imagine leads me to this preposterous escapade, if not that preposterous passion? That isn't the way I love you. Then why do you come with me? Perhaps I'm not coming. Yes, you are. It's foolish, mad, wicked, but you're coming. If not, <laughs> ten minutes away is safety and peace and comfort. <laughs> Shall I call a taxi for you? <laughs> no, I thought not. Oh, it's love, all right. Antony and Cleopatra defying and man act, romance, beauty, adventure. How can you doubt it? I hate you. I don't mind. I rather hate you myself. And that's the final proof that this is love. I thought love was something quite different. You thought it was beautiful. It isn't. It's just blithering, blathering folly. We will both regret it tomorrow. I won't. Yes, you will. It's human nature. Face the facts. Facing the facts is one thing. And being in love is another. Quite so. Well, how long do you think your love for me will last? Forever. I predict that you will fall in love with the next man you meet. I think you're perfectly horrid. So do I. I disapprove of myself violently. I'm a doddering lunatic, incapable of thinking of anything but you. I can't work. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I'm no use to the world. I'm not a man. I'm a mess. I'm about to do something silly because I can't do anything else. You've no respect for me. None whatever. I love you. And I'm going to carry you off. You're a brute. Absolutely. I'd advise you to go straight home. Perhaps I shall. Then go quick. In one minute, if you are still here, I shall pick you up and carry you off to South America. Quick, there's the door. I... Thirty seconds. I want to go. Well, why don't you? I... I can't. Time's up. My darling, my treasure, my beloved idiot that I am. No. 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 Stop. Never. Stop, please. Please. Oh. The light suddenly goes out, and an instant later blazes on again, revealing the angel who has suddenly arrived in the middle of the room. I hope I'm not intruding. Why, why, not exactly. Jimmy, who is that man? I, why, the fact is I don't... The fact is, madam, I am his guardian angel. An angel? Oh. Tell me, have I intruded? No, not at all. Thank you for reassuring me. I feared for a moment that I had made an inopportune entrance. I was about to suggest that I withdraw until you had finished the ceremony which I seem to have interrupted. But wasn't that what you came for, to interrupt? I beg your pardon? I mean, if you are my guardian angel and all that sort of thing, you must have come to interfere? I hope you will not think I could be capable of such presumption. You don't want to reform me? Not at all. Why, I scarcely know you. But you're my guardian angel, you say? Ah, yes, to be sure. But the relation of angelic guardianship has come for... Some hundreds of years have been a purely no nominal one. We have come to feel that it is best to allow mortals to attend to their own affairs. Then what did you come for? For a change. One becomes tired of familiar scenes, and I thought that perhaps my relationship to you might serve in lieu of an introduction. I wanted to be among friends. Oh, of I course. see. Of course. We're delighted to have you with us. Won't you sit down? If you don't mind. I have a cigarette? Thank you. Please correct me if I go wrong. This is my first attempt to remember. You're doing it very nicely. It is incense to the mind. <laughs> you must learn to do it like this. Annabelle laughs, blowing a series of smoke rings. That is too wonderful an art. I fear I can never learn it. 
I will teach you. If you were my teacher, I think I could learn anything. <laughs> really, Annabelle? What's the matter? Ordinarily, I wouldn't mind your flirting with strangers. Jimmy, how can you? It was my fault, I'm sure, if fault there was. But what is it to flirt? You see, I wish to learn everything. I hope you never learn that. I put myself in your hands. Um, uh, would you like a drink? Thank you, I am very thirsty. This is, is very different from what we have in heaven. And much better. May I have some more? Be careful. What should I be careful of? Don't drink too much of that, if it's the first time. <laughs> Why not? It's an excellent drink. <laughs> the maternal instinct. She's afraid you may make yourself uh, ridiculous. Angels do not care for appearances. Besides, I feel that you do an injustice to this drink. Already it has made a new being of me. I feel an emotion that I have never known before. If I were in heaven, I should sing. Oh, won't you sing? The fact is, I know nothing but hymns, and I'm tired of them. That was one reason why I left heaven. And this robe. Have you an extra suit of clothes you could lend me? Yeah, I think I have some things that might fit. Do you want them now? I'll, I'll look. Jimmy goes into the bedroom. The angel looks at Annabelle until his gaze becomes insupportable and she covers her eyes. I am very much afraid of you. One would never guess it. I am more afraid of you than I was of God. But even though I fear you, I must come close to you and touch you. I feel a strange new emotion like fire in my veins. This world has become beautiful to me because you're in it. I want to stay here so that I may be with you. For how long? Forever. Darling. I am so ignorant. There is something I want to do right now, only I don't know how to go about it properly. He bends shyly toward her lips. I will teach you. Oh, heaven has nothing on this. Well. Has something happened to annoy you? Oh, my new costume. Thank you so much. I suppose I've no right to complain. You can make love to anybody you like. In fact, now that I come to think of it, I predicted this very thing. I said you'd fall in love with the next man you met. So it's off with the old love. I have never been in love before. The fickleness of women is notorious. It is exceeded only by their mendacity. But angels have up to this time stood in good repute. Your conduct, sir, is scandalous. I'm amazed at you. It may be scandalous, but it should not amaze you. It has happened too often before. I could quote you many texts from learned theological works. And the sons of God looked at the daughters of men and saw that they were fair. But even if it were as usual as you imagine, that would not deter me. You are an unscrupulous wretch. If these are the manners of heaven, I'm glad it is so far away and means of communication is so difficult. A few more of you would corrupt the morals of five continents. You're utterly depraved. What are you doing? I am taking off my robes so as to put on my new clothes. Spare the common decencies at least. Go in the other room. Certainly, if that is the custom here. And now, tell me, what do you mean by this? We are in love. Do you mean to say you would throw me over for that fellow? Why not? What good is he? All he can do is sing hymns. In three months, he'll be a tramp. I don't care. And he won't be a tramp. I'll look after him. That maternal instinct. Well, take care of him if you like. But of course you know that in six weeks, he'll fall in love with somebody else. No, he won't. I'm sure I'm the only girl in this world to him. Of course you're the only girl in the world to him. Now, you're the only one he's ever seen. But wait till he sees others. Six weeks. On second thought, I make it three days. Immortal love. <laughs> what difference does it make? You don't understand. Whether it lasts a day or a year, well, at last it will be immortal. The angel enters, dressed in Jimmy's old clothes and carrying his wings in his hands. He seems exhilarated. 
How do I look? It is customary to wear one's tie tucked inside the vest. No. The angel flings the ends of the gorgeous necktie over his shoulder. Though I have become a man, I do not without some regret put on the dull garb of mortality. I would not have my form loose all its original brightness. Even so, it is the excess of glory obscured. You are quite right, darling. Thank you, beloved. And now these wings. Take them and burn them with your own sweet hands so that I can never leave you. No, I would rather put them away for you in a closet so you can go and look at them any time you want to and see that you have the means to freedom. I shall never hold you against your will. But if you insist... She takes the wings and approaches the grate. Don't let her do it, fool. You don't know what you're doing. Listen to me. You think that she is wonderful, superior, divine. It is only nature. There are moments when I have thought so myself, but I know why I thought so, and you have yet to learn. Keep your wings, my friend, against the day of your awakening, the day when the glamour of sex has vanished, and you see in her, as you will see, an inferior being with a weak body, a stunted mind, devoid of creative power, almost devoid of imagination, utterly lacking in critical capacity. A being who does not know how to work, nor how to talk, nor even how to play. Annabelle, dropping the wings on the hearth, stares at him in speechless anger. Sir, do you refer, in these vulgar and insulting terms, to the companion of my soul, the desire of my heart, the perfect lover whose lips have kindled my dull sense of ecstasy? I do. Remember that I know her better than you do, young man. Take my advice and leave her alone. Even now, it is not too late. Save yourself from this folly while there is still time. Never. Then take these tickets, and I hope that I never see either of you again. He holds out the tickets. Annabel, after a pause, steps forward and takes them. That is really sweet of you, Jimmy. And there's my taxi. Take that, too. Farewell. He opens the door. Annabel, at his side, turns and blows Jimmy a kiss. Stonily, Jimmy watches them go out. Then he picks up his suitcase and goes, with an air of complete finality, into the other room. There is a moment's silence, and then the door opens softly, and the angel looks in, enters surreptitiously, seizes up the wings, and with them safely clasped to his bosom, vanishes again through the door. Thank you for listening to The Angel Intrudes. Before you go, we are trying to spread art and joy during this time. If you are able, please share this on Facebook and tell all your friends about us. If you enjoyed the show and want to give to keep it going, please visit our website, www.curtaincalltheater.net. That's theater with an R-E. A special thank you to our producer, Bill Wenzel, and to all the actors who made this possible, as well as all of you for listening. We will see you back here next month for the comedy, The Last Comedian.